Hi, I'm Valerie from Valerie's Photo Channel with a new Lightroom Classic tutorial on masking. I'll cover auto masking and range masking. In my last tutorial, I'll put a link up to it. I went over the basics of using the adjustment brush to add effects to portions of your image. In this one, I want to show you a couple of ways of using auto masking and range masks when you want to isolate the areas you want to adjust. These options are available in Lightroom Classic with the adjustment brush, radial filter, and the graduated filter. First up is auto mask. On this bowl of chili, I'm going to use the adjustment brush, keyboard shortcut is K, to change the color of these napkins. So we're going to use auto masking. First, I'm going to click on show selected mask overlay so we can better see what we're doing. And I'm going to click auto mask. Basically, when you use auto mask, it helps you color inside the line. The first area that you click on is set as the one that Lightroom regards as what you want to mask. So it will pick up on that color and it will try to stay inside of that color range for you. I mean, it's not absolutely perfect, but it does a pretty darn good job most of the time. So you get the general idea here. I'm not going to mask out everything. I just wanted to show you how it worked. And then I wanted to show you perhaps a faster and easier way in many cases. So I'm just going to reset this. And then this method of auto masking, first I'm going to make the image small. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make my brush really big bigger than the whole picture. And I want to make sure I have auto mask selected. I'm going to click in the darkest area that is the most saturated of that brown napkin. So I'm going to click here to get a good selection. And you can see with one click, it pretty much made the selection for me. So that did a pretty darn good job. And then if you find there are some areas that accidentally got picked up, like I can see over here, in the chili, there were some darker brown chilies that um, got covered. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and try to erase those bits that accidentally got picked up. So this, even though I'm doing that, it's still much quicker than selecting and masking by hand. And if there are any other areas you wanted to get a little darker, like here where it was such a light area, it didn't pick up the tones quite as much. So you can also go over it here as you find that you need it. Okay, so then I'm going to click off the show mask overlay and let's just pick a color here. We're still in the adjustment brush. So I'm going to pick a nice rosy raspberry -y red. There's our change, and you can see I made a little mess over here, so I'm just going to clean that up. See how quickly we were able to make that adjustment. So I'm just going to click the done here, and then I'm going to move on to another image. Let's look at range mask, which is another way to selectively apply effects to your image. In this picture, I want to change the purple tulips in the background without affecting the purple and pink tones in her clothes. So I'm going to turn on the adjustment brush and I'm going to show select mask overlay. And I'm going to paint over the tulips. Now I don't have to worry too much about being inside the line in this case. So I can do it fairly sloppily because that's why we're going to use the color mask in this instance. So here we go. We have all of those flowers done. I'm going to do this one as well. This one is might be a little trickier because it's right in front of that pink bow or whatever she has on her dress. So we have a pretty good selection here. And I'm going to go down to the bottom of the adjustment panel and you'll see it says range mark off and that's the default. I'm going to turn it on and select color. Then you'll see that you get a dropper. 
I can pick up the dropper and then I can go in here and I can select the color that I want to have in my mask. So you can either just select it using the dropper or what works better for me is to draw a bigger area so I just find I get a better selection. And you see it's now it's just limited the, the mask to the areas of the pink tulips. So it pretty, did a pretty decent job. There's still a little bit right here. We can use the um, range mask slider, the amount slider here. You can adjust it up or down. If we need to adjust it down, I actually like to, I like it about, I think I'm gonna leave it about where it was. And there is a small area here that we can't seem to affect very well without losing the whole mask. So I'm going to just manually touch that up so by holding down the Alt key, turning my brush into a minus for a uh, to erase it. And I actually erased from the wrong area, so let's just erase this outside part, not the inside part. And then I'm going to go up here to, we're still in the adjustments brush. I'm going to take the temperature towards the blue. And oh, let's just hide the mask overlay. I, take, I took the temperature towards the blue. And how about maybe a little desaturation? I'll show you the before and after. I click down here to the bottom of the panel. I'm turning off the adjustment brush and turning it back on. So you can see how simple it was to make that adjustment with the range mask using color. So I'm going to click the done here and we're going to go down, down to our final image. In this image, we're going to use the range mask with luminance. So what I want to do here is make this center tunnel area brighter without blowing out these lights. So for this, I'm going to use the radial filter and I'm going to draw an ellipse over the center portion. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom of the panel I want to make sure I have my feathering at 100% so I have nice soft edges. And when invert is checked, the effects only happen on the inside, not the outside. And I'm going to show mask overlay, shortcut O, just so we can see where we're working. Right now the range mask is off. So I want to turn that on and I want to check luminance. And with luminance, we also have the dropper, just like with color but we also have a range slider. Now the left hand slider is for the darker tones. The right hand changes the lighter tones. So right now the mask is covering the lights and everything in the center. So I want to exclude the lights. I'm going to move the right hand slider towards the middle and you can see that it's no longer affecting the lights. You can also use smoothness and smoothness is how the effect drops off, if it's like a, a harsh or a smoother drop off. And I think I'm gonna leave it just about where it is. You can also click on show luminance mask. Sometimes it helps uh, show what you're doing a little better. Sometimes it doesn't. And I think I have a pretty decent selection. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to increase the exposure. And you can see it's just the center part that's being affected. It's not affecting these lights. And maybe add a little bit of clarity. So let's look at the before and the after. Here is the before and here is the after. So that's another way of making selected adjustments with masking. So I hope that you found this tutorial on masking possibilities helpful and if you did I'd appreciate a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel to get future tutorials and thanks for watching.